I'd like to show you how to play the spinning song. Um, the spinning song is a really fun little piece that everybody enjoys playing and it's a really good sort of, I think it's right on the edge of late elementary, early intermediate level. Um, it's just a fun piece to play. It's easy to memorize and uh, eventually fun to play fast. Make sure if you learn this piece you start slow, but eventually you'll be able to play it fast and have a lot of fun with it. So um, you can download the music at the website. Look under in the music library for uh, so the spinning song, or you can look under free piano lessons. I'll, I'll list it in there as well. And um, the video that you're about to watch will have me working phrase by phrase through the piece. Sometimes I work two measures at a time, sometimes four measures at a time, depending on the complexity of the measure. But you'll be working with the right hand by itself, the left hand sometimes by itself, though in this little pattern is so easy that I leave the left hand out a lot of the time and then just put them together. Um, but phrase by phrase will teach you the, the piece and then section by section show you how to use your metronome to sort of bring it up to tempo. The tempos that I use on this um, are uh, going to be a little too fast when you first start learning it. Just be aware that you'll be moving it up from a slower tempo. Um, and I hope I just hope you have a good time learning this because this is a really fun little piece to, to learn. So good luck with it. Here we go. So now, first thing, real quick, um, get the music off the website, and then um, if you want to mark it up like I normally do, I like to mark phrase by phrase. So, I mean, I have all the phrases marked with these uh, rehearsal markings, the A, the B, the C, and so forth. To follow me on the video, you're going to have to, of course, um, follow those. But I also like to visually have my music marked up. Maybe you want to do the same with these big parentheses. That marks the A phrase, the B phrase, C and the D, and so forth. Okay, now it marks the whole first section. Sometimes I mark the sections with big square brackets like this. So like this would be the whole first section. Um, oh, whoops, sorry. Goes to the G phrase. So, and then, there. So there's a whole first section. And then the G phrase, the H. I needed something back here to block this. Um, J phrase the K phrase, the L, and that marks the end of that middle section. So there's a big square bracket there. Now I have my middle section marked. And then the last section, I don't think you need to mark up the phrases because it's exactly the same as the first phrase until you get to the very end. The only other phrase we'll have to work on will be the S phrase because the rest of this whole last section is just a repeat of the first section. So anyway, that's how I like to divide the music up. You'll find out on the video that sometimes I, I chop the phrases in half. Like at first, I just do two measures here, two measures and two measures, and then this is a repeat of that. And then the C phrase, I like to chop two measures, two measures, and the D phrase. But from then on out, I don't do a whole lot of chopping up of phrases. I think in the middle section, you'll find that I like to chop the, the J phrase in half because it's a little more complex. But outside of that, you know, I work four measures at a time. Anyway, you can chop your music up like that if you want to, or do it as you go. Either way, this will help you visually see how you're working on the music. All right? Okay, we are ready. Notice at the very beginning of the spinning song, there are two measures where the left hand plays by itself. Those two measures go like this, one and two. I missed it. That was so hard that I missed it. Uh, anyway, those first two measures you can see are a pretty easy pattern. So once you've learned that pattern, you know the left hand part for a big chunk of this piece because of, you know there's at least eight phrases that have that pattern in them. So um, on all the phrases that have this pattern in them, I'm going to tell you you already know the left hand part. So all you have to do is learn the right hand part and then put them together. So let's go to the A phrase. The A phrase, I will teach you just the first two measures first. We'll go two measures at a time. And we're going to count the rhythm. Here's middle C. The right hand thumb goes on the A below that. We're going to play very smooth and count it like this. One, E, and a, two. You staccato that note. End up on a sixth. And then you have to count one while you tie it over. And then move your hand up, staccato this with a one and a four on this, staccato it, and, and you end up with a three, five on these two notes, an F and an A. It's an F major chord. And then 
you jump down and start again. Okay? So I won't talk so much. Let's just play it and count it. It goes one, E, and, a, two, and, one, and, two, and, one. So work on that till you have it memorized. And then add the left hand to it like this. One, E, and, a, two, and, one, and, two, and, one. Okay? And the trouble for some people is making sure that their left hand stays staccato, short, while the right hand plays smooth. Okay? So I'll show it to you one more time. Notice that the staccatos in the left hand stay staccato while the right hand plays smooth sometimes. And sometimes the right hand staccatos. One, E, and, a, two, and, one, and, two, and, one. And there's the first half of the A phrase. Work on that till you get it. And then the second half of the A phrase is very similar. The, the second half of the A phrase, you're going to use instead of two notes a lot of the time, like in the first half, you're going to use three notes at a time. You'll notice when you go to that, the sixth, you add a C in the middle, and then you're going to go to this chord. This is a C7 chord. Your thumb is on the B flat, second finger is on C, fourth finger is on E, then you go right back to the F major chord. And here's how it goes. This is the second half of the A, sec uh, a phrase. One, E, and two, and one, and two, and, and then you start again, one. And you'll notice, of course, the B phrase is the exact same thing, but we're not going to talk about that yet. We're going to do that right hand one more time. One, E, and a, two, and one. Let's put it with the left hand. One, E, and a, two, and one, and two, and one. <clears throat> and once you have that learned, you're ready, and you've got memorized and everything, you're ready to put the entire A phrase together. The first time we put it together, let's put a stop in the middle, like this. One, E. go from there. One, E, and a, two, and one, and two, and one. And now, let's try the whole A phrase with no stop in the middle. One, E, and a, two, was the A phrase. Now um, I'm going to go ahead and show you putting it with a metronome and see if we can start working on some tempo. I'm going to set the metronome at 80 for the eighth note. That's what the left hand's playing. So this is quite a bit faster. Um, this will be after you've worked on it for a while and you're familiar with it. You can start working on some speed. We were just now probably all the way down at about one E and we were even slower than that. We were probably about 50. So I'm going to make quite a jump here, but just to show you how once you get to know it, you can start working with your metronome. You don't need to start up at 80, but that's where I'm starting just so you can see it for the video. Here's the, the, the A phrase at 80. One E and a two. So that was the A phrase at 80, and now I'm going to move it up to 104. And this, of course, is another big jump. You'll take smaller jumps as you work, and it'll take more time. This, is, this represents probably at least a couple weeks worth of work before you're up to 104. But here's 104. <laughs> the A 
rephrase it 104. And then after a little bit more work, maybe another week or so, you can probably work it up to about 132. This is 132 for the eighth note. And that was it. So let's stop there. That's, that's a decent tempo for now. And then there's no, like, uh, if you've seen the video, I, I have a video of me playing it all the way through the whole entire piece. I played it probably twice that speed, which is 132 for the quarter note, which goes like this. And that would be the A phrase up to a very fast speed, but you should not even worry about that until you've been practicing the piece for at least a, you know, a month or two. Now, moving on to the B phrase, you'll notice that the B phrase is the same as the A phrase, so why do we need to practice it? Well, the only reason is that it goes to a, a different place. It goes to the C phrase, which is different. I'm going to turn this metronome off. Um, the C phrase has a, a left hand down on C and the right hand coming in on the and with these two notes. So what you should do is not necessarily practice the entire B phrase. How about just the second half of the B phrase, which you already know, but practice it once, with, once or twice with the right hand, once or twice with the left hand, going to the C phrase, like this. One E and a two and one and two and one and. And notice that I just went to the end of the next phrase. So you're ready to move up there. Then the left hand, after it does its one E and a two and one and two, then you have to be ready to stretch it to C and play an octave. It's kind of the same pattern, but now instead of a fifth, you're going to play an octave. So get ready for that on the C phrase. Now I'm going to put them together, and this is just the last half of the B phrase going into the C phrase. One E and a two and one. Oh, I screwed it up. It goes one E and a two. I forgot the middle note. There you go. So you would practice that a few times, and then back up and play the rest of the B phrase before that a few times. My, I make my students get three perfects. So here we go with three perfects. Uh, maybe the first one will put it at 80. You can include a, a little metronome practice here. One and a two. be the B phrase, okay? So I'm not going to go through the different tempos with that one because we already did that with the A phrase. However, I want to show you putting it all together now. Once you've got the A and the B phrase, of course they're the same, um, go ahead and tack on the beginning part. I'm going to zip it up to 104 to save a little bit of time. Let's play the opening plus A and B phrase and we will stop on the C phrase. Here it goes. One and two. the C phrase, I like to start soft because we're going to do a crescendo on that. So anyway, now you're ready to move on and learn. And so the C phrase, you already know the left hand part. This is the left hand part. Once you learn how to do that little bouncing octave, you've got the C phrase and the D phrase for that matter. The right hand is what we're going to learn. We're going to learn the right hand for just two measures. Counting, we're going to go one and two and one and two, and one. And the most important thing to notice here are, are of course, the fingerings. We want to make sure you get a one, two on the first one, the E and the G, a one, three, a two, four, and a one, three, and then stop with a three, five, up here. Okay, I'll do that one more time. One, and two, and one, and two, and one. Now, let's add the left hand, very slow. One, and, two, and, one, and, two, and, one. Okay, and that was the first half of the C phrase. Once you get that memorized, let's learn the second half of the C phrase. Right hand started with a three and a five, 
And then we're gonna walk down and watch the fingering very closely. Three, five, two, four, one, three. Let me hold on to these so you can see them better. I'll do that again. Three, five. They're gonna be staccato, but I'm holding them so you can see them better. B flat, D. Walk down, and we've got G, B flat, and then your one, two goes on F and A, and then a one, two again. And then the one, two, four on this, this is a G7 chord, G7, and it leads to a C major chord. Okay, now I'll do it with the staccatos and the counting. And we're gonna go, I think, overlap to the first notes in the D phrase, which is these two notes again on the and. So here it goes, ready? The second half of the C phrase. One, and, two, and, one, and, two, and, one, and. And there's a lot of versions that show a staccato on that last chord, like this one. And, two, you can do that. I kind of like a long note, so I took the staccato off of my copy of them when I uh, printed this out. So, you can decide which one you like. I'm going to play the long chord at the end. Okay, now let's add the left hand to that and we'll have the second half of the C phrase. One and two and one and two and one and. Okay, now you can, of course, when you practice these things, practice bringing out the top note. The right hand has two notes every time, and what you should do is bring out the top note. That's called voicing. Okay, so if you can, try to make the top note the loudest one. Listen to my top notes as I play now, the whole C phrase. I'm going to put a stop in the middle of the first time. One, and, two, and, one, and, two, and, one. And then stop, and then go from there. One. just did the first notes of the D phrase. Now let's do it without a stop. The whole C phrase. One and two and one and two and one and two and one and two and one and. Okay. And now let's go through the different tempos. We'll do 80 and then we'll do 104 and then 132 on the metronome. Here we go. This, of course, is after you've learned it and gotten pretty good at it. You're getting confident. You're ready to start working with your metronome. You've worked your way up from about 56 or 50 all the way up to 80. Ready? One. the C phrase at 80, and here it is at 104. I sort of held through the rest there at the end, sorry about that. Now we'll do it at 132. You'll notice I'm trying to shape it, and if you want to know musically what you're going to do with it, I think you start soft, crescendo up. When you get to this, I like to come down a little bit and then crescendo again at the end. So let's try it. Here we go, the whole C phrase at 132. One, two, one, and two, and one, and two, and one, and two, and one. And that was it. A little bit of slop in there. Sorry about that. Um, now, uh, you know what the C phrase sounds like. And we're going to move on to the D phrase before we start putting things together, all right? So the D phrase is very similar to the uh, C phrase. It starts out exactly the same. The first two measures you don't even need to do, so let's just play through them once. One, and, two, and, one, and, two, and, one. Okay, so you already know that. First two measures of the D phrase, same as the first two measures of the C phrase, so you already know it. Here's the last two measures of the D phrase. You're going to staccato this, but I'm going to hold them so you can see my fingerings once again. Your 3-5 here, your 2-4, one, 1-3, one, 1-2, and this is where it's different than the other one. You're going to cross over with a 2-4 here, because that sets you up for the next part, which is your thumb on C, your third finger crosses over, your second finger, 
And then we're ready to start the E phrase, which you might recognize. All right? So I'd like to overlap all the way to there. All right? Back to the second half of the D phrase. This time I'm going to go slow and count it. One and two and one and two and one E and a two and. Okay? And some people would say, well, look, um, at the end of that little rundown, these two notes here, you're supposed to hold them. And I didn't hold them that time. You could hold them through that first beat because it is a quarter note. So you go one and and then two, let go on that. I don't really worry about that in that spot, but if you want to be exact, you could hold it through and then let go here. Up to you. Okay, so now let's do the second half of the D phrase with both hands. We'll just add the left hand. One and two. Oh my gosh, I just totally screwed up the fingering. Let me try that again. One, I wasn't thinking. And two, and now four, two. And two, and one, E, and a two, and. There you go. Now, I don't know if you noticed, but I screwed up something else that time. I want to show you. I came down, I did this okay. And then I let go of the left hand too soon. Don't let go of the left hand on the and, hold it until two and one e and a two and those little details are good for your piano playing make sure when you hold a quarter note that you hold it until the next and i'll show you the next beat right so anyway there's the second half of the d phrase let's play the first half of the d phrase stop and then the second half one and two Stop, think, and then play one and two and hold and off and one E and a two. Stop. Okay, so I overlapped all the way into the E phrase, the first measure. Now we're going to do it without the stop. One. Now let's bring the metronome into it. I'm going to set the metronome at 80. And the first time we play through it, it will be 80. And then, the, uh, and then we'll do 104 and then 132. Once again, realize that we were way down in the probably the 40 range just now, in the 40s or 50s. You'll work your way up, and it might take you a week or two just to get to the point where you're doing it at 80. But here is 80. One. it. Now we're going to move it up to 104. There we go. One and two and one and two and Okay, now we're going to move it up to 132. And at 132 we'll do the D phrase and then put the C and the D together. Here, so first the D phrase. back up, put C and D together at 132. Of course, you could do it at slower speeds first, but this saves time on the video to do it up at 132. Oh, I screwed that up. I wasn't thinking. I'm going to try that again. the entire C and D phrases together. Now you actually know the entire first section, what I would call the first section, which goes from the A 
all the way to the G. So now I was going to play the entire first section for you, but then I realized um, I need to show you the transition from the uh, F phrase into the G phrase. So let's learn that first, and then we'll play through the whole first section. So here's the uh, end of the F phrase. If you look down at the bottom of that first page, measure 25, I'm going to do the second half of the F phrase with just the right hand. You already know it. Then on the and, you lift up and you go to these two notes, and I would like to overlap all the way up to the second measure of G phrase. Okay, so I'll do that again. One, E, and, a uh, two, and, one, and, two, and, one, and, two, and, a uh, one. And I like to play that right hand really soft and short on this at the beginning of this G phrase. Now, the left hand does something slightly different than normal. It breaks the pattern early. You're doing one and two and, but then this measure, you're going to stop right here on two, then lift on the and, jump up, and the melody, takes, uh, the melody goes into the left hand now, so your left hand needs to be stronger. One and two and a one. Okay, so that will be the left hand melody on the G phrase. Now we're going to transition from the F phrase into the G phrase with both hands. Here's how it goes. One E and a two and one and two and one and two and one and that's it. So once you get good at that little transition, I've done it several times, Back up and just try the whole F phrase going into the G phrase like this. One, e, and, uh, two, and, one, and, two, and, one, and, uh, two, and, one, and, two, and, one, and, two, and, one, and that's it, okay? So now, once you have that F phrase transition learned, you are ready to play the entire first section, which to me goes from the beginning all the way to the G phrase. I'm going to just go ahead and play it all the way through at 132 to save time. You, of course, can start as slow as you need to and work up over time. For you to hit 132 will probably take at least three or four weeks of work, okay? So don't be in a hurry to get there, but I just want to show it to you. Here's the whole first section. So the whole first section, you get it learned, and then you're ready to tackle the G phrase. So the G phrase begins the middle section of this piece, and the left hand has the melody for the whole first part. So let's go ahead and learn the left hand first. And on this section, um, not every phrase needs to be played uh, or learned two measures at a time. I think the G phrase is easy enough to go ahead and learn four measures because it's not very complex. So I'm going to go ahead and, and show you the, the whole G phrase instead of going half of it and then half of it. So here we go. The left hand by itself on the G phrase. You'll notice the melody plays those notes which are the one chord in this piece, the F major chord. So it goes one and two and one and two. And then your second finger on B flat, one and two and a one and two. And then it starts again. This is the beginning of the H phrase, okay? So that's not very hard to memorize. Go ahead and memorize that part and then learn the right hand part. The right hand through this whole section for the G, the H, 
in the I phrases. Uh, oh yeah, and the J phrase as well. The right hand is just playing backup chords, so make sure the right hand is very soft in the background and staccato like this. One and two and a one. So the whole G phrase, both hands. Let's give it a try. Left hand has the melody, so make the left hand strong, right hand soft. One. detail that I make all my students do just because it's really good for you to know how to do these little details or to at least think about them is that after my left hand plays those notes and it's holding this make sure you hold that note until you say and so it's one and two and one and two see how I lift it off there one and two same thing here one and two and one okay so that was the G phrase. Now, before we get on the metronome and move it faster, let's learn the H phrase. You go ahead and work on that G phrase and get good at it. And then once you're memorized and ready to go, learn the H phrase. The left hand starts the same way. You already know the first two measures. One and two and a one and two and one and two E and a one and two and one. Let me play that last half again for you a little slower. This is the second half of the H phrase. One and two E and a one and two. And then the first note of the I phrase. So go ahead and play that H phrase with the left hand until you have it memorized. And then the right hand has a similar thing as it did in the G phrase, but it's a little bit different at the very end. So you have this one and two. And then it switches one and two and a one. Now here's how it's different. You go to a three five on these two notes, an F and an A flat. So that's two and two and and then one. A four and a three on these two notes. Okay? So let's do it one more time so you can see it better. I'll just go straight through it. One and two and a one and two and one and two and a one. Now, once you've got that learned, put them together. One and a one and two. One and two and a one and two and one. Okay? And of course, uh, you probably should go a lot slower that, than that when you put them together. Just realize that when I do these videos, my tempo sometimes when I'm just showing it on the video is probably quite a bit faster than you should do on your first time putting them together. Because when you first put them together, they're a lot harder. So probably you want to go one and two and a one. And that would help you because when, especially when you get to this part, one and two, your hands and your brain need that slow tempo to help you to help you put them together. But now, let's pretend like you've got it all learned, you've worked on it, you've got the H phrase and the G phrase, let's put them together. Um, and let's start working with the metronome. Uh, after a while, you've been working your way up, and suddenly you can do it at 80. And not suddenly, over time, gradually you can do it at 80. So we're gonna start with the G phrase and the H phrase here. phrase at 80. Let's hear it at 104. Okay, and then one more time at 132. And 
once you've learned that, you're ready to move on to the I phrase. All right, so now on the I phrase, first thing I want to point out is that um, the fingering that I wrote on your, sh on your music for this note right here, this is the I phrase, the number one finger should be changed to a two. So um, <laughs> let me go get a pencil real quick. You would have thought, I would have thought of that before doing the video. Okay, so what I would do is just change it. I'm going to scratch it out and write a two. Sorry about that, but that was a fingering error that I just caught right now as I was making the video. So you go ahead and change that to a two and we're in good shape. And now we're ready to start learning the left hand on the I phrase. So the left hand starts out with a G chord and you go one and two and a Two. Then you can move to your thumb. And then it goes to an F chord. So we're going to go one and two and a one and two. And then the first note of the I, or sorry, of the J phrase. Now, this is another one of those phrases to me that's easy enough to do the whole four measures. If you find the whole four measures too much, chop it into two plus two. But for now, I'm just going to show you the whole four measures. Let's do that one more time. One and two and a one off two and one and two and a one and two and one okay now once you have that left hand learned the right hand is playing two notes here the three and the four and you count one and remember to keep them soft and one and two and one with a one, two, four on a D7 chord there, okay? Now you've noticed the second measure of I, you had these two notes, and on the, on the and, you get to play this, and that's the only time you play that one. So it's one, and, two, and, one, okay? So let me go back and play the whole I phrase one more time with just the right hand, watch it closely. One, and, two, and it changes here. One, and, two, change here, and, and then, And of course, keep them soft. I was playing a little bit loud there. So now both hands, once you get the hands memorized separately, put them together nice and slow. And like I said, when, when you put something with the hands together for the first time, you've got to go ultra slow, like about this fast. One and two and a one and two. I should not have staccato that, but oh well, keep going. One. That was kind of ultra slow. Now I'll do it a little bit quicker. One and two and one and two and one and two and a one and two and one. Okay, that was the I phrase. Let's move on to the J phrase. Now the J phrase has a little more complexity to it because the chords change a little more. So I think you should chop this into two measures plus two measures. So um, let's do the left hand first. On the first two measures of the J phrase, again, the left hand's playing a chord. This is a D major chord, so you can memorize it by the chord. One and two and a one and two and one. You finish with a B flat. Okay, so that's the first two measures. One more time, watch. One and two and a one and two and one. Now the right hand. The right hand on the J phrase starts out with what we call a D7 chord. It's like a D major with a seventh added. If you take the seventh and put it here, it's still the same chord. So this is a D7. One and two, and it leads to a G minor chord. This is a G minor chord. If you were to take the G, put it down here, you'll see this is a G minor, but it's been inverted. So that'll help you memorize that part. You think G minor with a one, a two, and a five. So one, and, and then your two four is right here. Two, and, and then one, okay? So I'll do that uh, right hand one more time. Counting, and, two, and, oh. Now, 
now let's put them together. Left hand, right hand. One and two and one and two and one. And again, make sure the left hand is louder than the right hand while you do that. Get those two measures learned, and then it's time to learn the next two measures. So the second half of the J phrase, your second finger is on B flat. Go to your fourth finger on G sharp, and then your third finger on A, and lift off on the AND. Then you need to be ready for the K phrase, where you're going to be playing an E7 chord without the B. So it's this. This is an E7 chord. And you're going to go one and two. Okay, so let's just overlap to beat two there. Back to the half, the half mark of the J phrase. One and two and one and two and one and two. Okay? Now, the right hand. The right hand on the second half of the J phrase starts with these two notes. One and two and one. And here's the fun part of this fingering. There's an E every time, but notice on your music it says to switch fingers. You start with a three one. Play the three again, but switch to a two, switch to a one, and that gets you in position for this. And I notice again another fingering kind of, I, I failed to, to note on the music that you have to put your fifth finger on top. I just put a one on the music, which applies to this one, but you need a five on top. I think you can figure that out for yourself. One of these days I'll have to go in and edit the music and put the fingerings the way they're supposed to be. But you can figure it out, okay? So now let's try that again. Back to the second half of the J phrase. One and two and a one and switch fingers, two switch fingers and and then octave. Here's where the melody goes back into the right hand. So you want to bring out that high note, okay? Now let's do both hands. Once you get the right hand memorized, the left hand memorized, put them together. The left hand. B flat, right hand, count it. One and two and one and two and one and two. All right? Now, once you get that learned, put the whole J phrase together like this. We'll do it with a stop the first time. One. there. One and two and one and two and one and two. All right. So that was the J phrase with a stop. Let's take the stop out now. One and two and one and two and one and two. Now you know the J phrase, so work on that until you have it memorized. Then you can put the I and the J phrase together, and let's do it with the metronome once again. Uh, just keep in mind, you're not going to be this fast right away, so just, just patiently work your way up to it, but I'm going to start at 80. I'll do the I and the J phrase at 80, like this. One. Same thing. Once you've done that, you're almost ready to um, play the whole section, but you still have the K and the L phrase to go. So I'm not going to demonstrate the whole section until we get those two phrases. So 
hopefully, on you go to the K and the L phrase. So now the big difference between the K and the L phrase, or should I say, the big difference between this part and the part you just learned, you know, the, the G through the J phrases, um, is that now the melody's in the right hand. So let me go ahead and play the right hand first. It doesn't matter which hand you learn first. I tend to um, go back and forth. Right now, I feel like doing the melody first. So <laughs> we're gonna do the K phrase. And I think this is one, um, where you could probably handle the whole four measures. So you can decide on your own whether you want to chop it into two plus two, but I'm going to go ahead and do the whole four measures here. One and two and a one and two and one and two and a one and two and again one. Okay, so now both times there's a chord involved. The first two measures this chord right here is all part of what we call an E major with a seventh added. See, that's the seventh. So this leads to this note right here, which is part of the A major chord. And then again, on the second half, you play E major, which is obvious. And then that leads to, again, the A major, but just a single note. And then you're back to that. Okay? So I'll play it one more time, counting one and two and the A major off. Two. E major, one and two, and a one and two, and back to E major. And this just points out that knowing your chords will help you. That's why if you get on the website, you should go ahead and look at all the major and minor triads and get to know those because it will help you learn your music. Anyway, let's go ahead and go to the left hand. Speaking of chords, the left hand has an E7 at the same time that the right hand did. One and and then it changes to A major. One and two. And then back to the E7 with a different voicing. This time your E7, instead of having this note in the middle, has this note in the middle. Okay, so it's still the same chord, but it's just a different voicing. One and two. And then back to the A major chord. And two. And one back to E. Okay, so the E7 and the A major are the two chords we're dealing with. Left hand, let's do it one more time. I'll play it straight through without talking so much. One and two and a one and two and one and two and a one and two and one. Okay. And you can kind of hear me counting and singing the right hand part while I play the left hand. I like to do that to sort of um, prepare my mind and my hands to put them together. So now, You've done the left, you've done the right, let's put them together. The K phrase, here we go. One and two and a one and two. One and two. One. And that was the K phrase. And once you get that memorized and learned, work on the L phrase. The, the L phrase starts exactly the same as the K phrase. So the right hand, you already know the first half. And then the second half starts the same. Oops, fourth finger, sorry. And then, and here's where we add a little bit. We're gonna go one and two and one and two and. So let's focus on just that last part that we added, the, the L phrase adds to the K phrase like this. You get to the A with your third finger, you play it twice. And then there's this little B flat going to G and then C. So you have to learn B flat, G, C. B flat G C. Just do that a few times. You'll have it memorized, no problem. Okay. So let's do that L phrase one more time. One and two and a one and oh, I should not have staccato that. Oh well. One and two. Now staccato this one and two and one and two and. Okay. Now we'll learn the left hand. Once you get the right hand memorized, left hand's turn. You've got your E seven. And your A7, A, or just an A major. Back to the E7 with a different voicing. And back to A major with a 1 3 fingering. Staccato it. And go to an octave B flat. And then the G. And the C. And then back to our very first pattern. Okay, so you can overlap to there. Let's do that left hand one more time. I will not talk so much. Instead, I'll just count it. One and two and a one. And 
two. All right, so that's the left hand part on the L phrase. Now we're ready to do the whole L phrase with both hands. Right hand has the melody, keep the left hand soft. One. So hopefully you recognize that on this part, they, they go back and forth. It's not hard. It's a little syncopated. One and two. I counted that wrong just now. It's two and one and two. And, and that is the transition back to our A phrase, which will now become the M phrase. But anyway, you are now ready, hopefully, to put the K and the L phrases together. Um, and when you do, you can go ahead and start working with the metronome, which I'm going to do. I'm going to do it at 80 first. So one, two. at 80 for the, uh, the L, the K and the L phrases. Now I'm going to put it at 104. at 104 and now we're going to jump up to 132 and just a reminder it'll take you a long time to get up to 132 so don't be in a hurry but here's what it sounds like music it says to play soft right when you come in with that I kind of like to play it strong at first and then drop down to soft that's just me you can do it however you want so now once you get the K and the L phrases learned you can play the whole middle section which I'm going to do now at 132 this starts all the way back at the G phrase just so you know how the whole middle section sounds together bring out that melody with the left hand section overlapping into the next. Now you're almost done with this piece. So let's move on and talk about the last section. Okay. So once you have learned the A through F phrases, which is the first section, and then you learn the middle section, which is G all the way up through L, then you'll notice that when you start at the M phrase, and uh, go all the way to the R phrase, you, you have an exact repeat of our first section. So really, the only thing left to learn is the last phrase of the piece, which is the S phrase. So I'm going to skip all the way down to the S phrase, but we need to talk about how the R phrase goes into the S phrase. So we're gonna go ahead and play the right hand by itself on the last half of our R phrase and play into the S phrase from there. You'll see how it works. So here we go, the second half of the R phrase, one, E, and a, two, and one, and 
you already know this, two, and then you hold it for beat one, and then you come in with the third finger and the thumb, the B flat and the D, and you walk up on and a one, th oh, sorry, that's beat two, and a two, and, and then you were, uh, tie it over on beat one, and you come in on the and again, and a two, and you do it a third time, and a one. Okay, so that was the first half of the S phrase coming in out of the R phrase. So I'm gonna do this. I'll play this part that you already know. And then staccato this. And from here on, I'm gonna start with this chord, okay? So here's the and right before the S phrase. You're playing this chord, and one, Notice when my thumb goes from the B flat to the A, it sort of slides down because we're going to try to make it sound smooth. So just let it sort of slide down and make it as smooth as you can. Okay? So let's do that one more time. I'm holding this chord right before the S phrase, and we're going to count one. just sits there holding all the way to the end and you'll let go on beat two at the very end um, but I think you can work on that to the right hand is in your head and in your hand and then let's work on the left hand on the S phrase the left hand is still doing its usual pattern for two more phrases two more measures I mean and then all of a sudden the very last three measures of the piece consist of the left hand playing the, the F staccato then you jump up and start playing smooth to play smooth right up to there and then staccato these last few notes. And I realize there's kind of a slur written underneath those. Um, I think I would ignore the slur and just play them all staccato to the last note. So I'm going to do those last three measures again where it says diminuendo in ritardando, the dim e rit, that which means here, <laughs> show it to you. I'm going to start right here, all right, whereas diminuendo e ritardando means getting softer and slower. But I'm going to just go ahead and play the notes with the left hand. You staccato the F. One and two and one and then start staccatoing. And two and one. Okay, and if you don't like that fingering, you can probably come up with uh, some fingering that you like better, but that's the one that I wrote down. I tend to play different fingerings on that ending, but I, I think I like that one. Um, you'll notice after you do back and forth here, the last notes of the piece consist of an F major chord. So that'll help you memorize. All right, I'm going to play that last part with the left hand one more time. One and two. So now let's back up and try putting the hands together on the S phrase. Right hand is playing this chord, so hold on to that and then start counting the left hand. One and a two and one and a two and a one and two and one and two and hold and then lift hands. On two. I just did a, the wrong fingering down here, but uh, once again, I tend to be random on that. Sorry about that. But now let's go ahead and do it starting all the way back at the R phrase, because once you have your S phrase learned, you can go ahead and put the last phrase uh, with it. So we're going to play the R phrase and the S phrase together.
time I played the right fingering. So now, you know how the whole piece ends. And what I would do is practice one section per day or um, get to the point where you can hold, you know, practice a whole section in one practice session. And then you can start working with your metronome to get it all the way up to the speeds. I'm going to go ahead and play the entire last section for you just to show you what it sounds like up at 132 for the eighth note. <laughs> I ignored the metronome at the end because I like to do the little bit of slowing there. But um, that is the entire piece. Now you hopefully will have the whole piece learned at that point. And then you can work with your metronome phrase by phrase and get it up to a tempo. Then you can also add all the musical shaping ideas that if you listen to uh, any per performance of the piece, you can listen to it on YouTube. You can listen to the one that I have posted. Um, and and you can get some ideas on how to perform it musically. Once you've worked with your metronome up to a certain speed, then you can turn your metronome off and start playing with, with a little bit of timing. You know, at the end of a phrase, you slow down. There are places in there where it says to, to slow down, where it says RIT, which stands for ritardando. Um, so you slow on those places, and then you speed back up when it says a tempo. But anyway, that is the spinning song, and I really hope this helps you learn it. So have fun with the piece. <laughs> Good luck with that.